Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spot Convention with the Glee Comic Roundup. We've made it through most of the roundup, now it's time to, to uh, you know, continue through with uh, this, this week's Spider-Man books, as well as a, few, as well as a couple other uh, non-Spider-Man books. Kicking these off, we've got Spectacular Spider-Man, number 5. So, this series uh, focuses on Miles and Peter, working together. Um, the first arc has uh, had them basically deciding to, that they should get together, touch base, and whatnot, not as uh, as Spider-Man. However, this has led to them uh, stumbling upon a scheme by Arcade and Mentallo. And they've... Uh, there have been some disappearances in the area, and um, Peter and Miles end up uh, at the mercy of Arcadium and Tallow and their uh, new business venture, the Arcadium, which is being funded by which is, whose primary investor is Hammerhead. But each of them got. Uh, Kind of a like their you know their be the best fa the their best fantasy life um, Miles dating Kamala Khan Peter married with married and having kids with uh, Gwen Stacy and Aunt May and Uncle Ben being alive. However. They've they each faced robot versions of because of themselves, and now they they're facing face with each other, but they each of them figures that the other's still a robot. As they're fighting, each of them uh, notes that their spider sense is only triggering right after the hit. But uh, with Hammerhead noting that mm, Spy Spider Men are uh, potentially going to wreck, their, wreck his investment, well, he's going in with his uh, fantasy. Elsewhere, um, the investigation for. Of the uh, of a dead body that was discovered uh, in the first issue has led to uh, interesting findings. And the possibility of my, of the involvement of, my, of Professor Miles Warren. However, notably, my, Professor Warren's brother, Professor Raymond Warren, has also popped up. And he's opts to vault, he opts to uh, look into the uh, di well disappearances lately. And well, yeah. Um, but the fight between Spider between the Spider Men uh, ends up crashing into one of the other uh, vignette <clears throat> uh, potential vignettes. This time, doing Turk involving Turk, uh, a. Uh, Long time, uh, always a always a henchman, never the boss type character. But uh, in dealing with uh, Turk, Peter and Miles realize that oh, they're uh, they're actually them. It 
And so, camera head is, te is teed up. Um, and uh, Turk spills the beans on uh, what the Arcadium can do. Um, it can read your deepest fantasies, bring them to life. It's a real rush. Turk figures it could maybe even be addictive. But Peter points out that, okay, if it's the Arcadium, then Arcade is likely involved, so... And, well, he is. So we get to see... Hammerhead's fantasy. He's the boss boss. And among his uh, chief henchmen are... Silvermane, the Kingpin, Black Cat, Mr. Negative, and Tombstone. But it seems that uh, Professor Raymond Warren uh, has seemingly uh, stumbled into the uh, Arcadium. But, uh, he might not be Professor Raymond Warren. And that is where the issue ends. It's a, this is, so far it's a good book. I like it. I dig it. Um, I, it's nice seeing Peter and Miles together on, on a regular basis as opposed to just Oh, hey, it's a major Spider-Man story. Got to have them both together. You know, why not have them both together for, you know, stopping, you know, just radio stuff. But anyways, moving on to our next book, we've got Spider-Woman number nine. So, after uh, the events of Gang War, Spider-Woman has uh, opted to uh, go west, back to San Francisco, um... And she has stumbled upon a uh, team of young superheroes known, named the Assembly. But they... It kind of looks like maybe they're not on the up and up. And so... And, and it turns out they are not... They're definitely not on the up and up. In fact, they're... Uh, The uh, member Titan, it, who is basically a Hulk, is uh, actually, actually the Gremlin, once known as uh, the Titanium Man. So the issue opens with uh, a knock on uh, Spider-Woman's uh, temporary apartment door. It's Liberty from uh, the Assembly. And uh, she wants help. She's not She's not sure that she is who, th she, th who she thinks she is. And uh, recently the, the Assembly and uh, Spider-Woman had a run-in with uh, Anger, Anger the Screamer. And Anger, uh, Angar... Uh, his scream seems to maybe jog her memory, jog Liberty's memories. Jess points out that she's been on the receiving end of an anger, anger scream before. It can cause, it can be disorienting, make you see some upsetting stuff, trippy hallucinations, like a waking nightmare, but Liberty appears it doesn't, they weren't, they weren't. She didn't, she don't, doesn't think she hallucinated. But, uh, Je Jess hears her out, um, and Jess has had a lot of experience with Hydra. And Jess is going to help her. 
So, we got a plan. Basically, um, bring Angar out of uh, where he's being held and uh, get into the uh, um, the assembly's base and have uh, have him unleash his uh, scream on the rest of the team. So, maybe he'll jog their memories. Um, Angar, Angar and the other villains that uh, the assembly's taken down are being held in Alcatraz. Um, Uh, Liberty's got some uh, invisibility tech, which uh, she, her and Jess utilized to uh, break to break in easily. Um, so, Liberty works on uh, releasing Angar while Angar, while Jess tries to say, "Hey, look." We're all, we're all on the same side. There's a, there's an issue, you know. So a Angar isn't entirely buying it, namely the point where uh, Jess points out that uh, Hydra took her son. He didn't, he didn't even know that Jess had a son. But uh, the assembly. Uh, crashes in and uh, so Liberty just releases everyone and works on but everyone's got a hit her collars so she's working on angers um, once, it's, once it's taken care of he unleashes uh, his scream on everyone and everyone see, and all of the assembly uh, stop are stopping their tracks, with the exception of Titan. As we know, though, Titan is uh, the mastermind, and uh, Jess takes on Titan. Um, while the rest of the team uh, basically say. Hey, the rest of the assembly say, hey, yeah, we're... They re realize that, yeah, Titan isn't one of them. But, uh, as Jess and Titan fight, Titan reveals he's the gremlin, and, uh, that he's the one that brainwashed, uh, her son into a Hydra assassin. And that is where the issue ends. I'm digging this book and uh, definitely hoping uh, you know, this, this was, it says to be concluded so I hope this, that's just the uh, conclusion is just the end of uh, the first arc so well, the first Dawn Gang War arc but uh, anyways moving on to our next book we've got What If Aliens number five the basic idea of this is what if Carter Burke lived um, there's, a, and in doing so, he basically was he was blamed for, publicly blamed for the deaths of uh, the colonists at least Hope, and uh, disgraced and continued, but continued to uh, work with Willie Utani, and was given a uh, post a, po a, a backwater uh, posting. Um, and he's frozen his wife. Uh, Zoe, uh, who's dying from cancer, but uh, he's trying to reconnect with his daughter Bree, who had a hookup. He also tried to u utilize uh, the embittered C uh, son of the C of the Whaley Tiny CEO uh, to potentially smuggle it to uh, basically get a. Uh, Get his xenomorph uh, past quarantine, basically to you know once again do what he tried to do with aliens. However, here Yutani just uh, was like, yeah, no, and uh, tried to take, tried to prove himself to his father. But there's a emergency, so there's emergency alert at the mining station. Um, 
everyone's griping about Burke when uh, during the evac, but uh, I think here's a drill. But uh, xenomorphs are uh, the xenomorphs get loose, and one of uh, Burke's employees is killed. Uh, Burke and his daughter they uh, witness this, but they get a, they figure a plan and. Burke's gonna save, gonna be the be a hero and save his employees. But uh, Hiro Yutani tells the uh, tells his father about the fact that Burke was using company resources to list, to secretly uh, keep his wife uh, cryogenically frozen for th over thirty years and. His father was not impressed. But he, his father, in fact, his father knew. However, he also points out that uh, he's got a xenomorph egg. He has a xenomorph egg. But uh, Burke's employees, uh, of course, deal with xenomorphs. Um, Burke crawls into his office and apparently he has an M41 pulse rifle uh, on his wall, framed. He uses it to uh, save his uh, employees. Um, one of them, uh, when the Queen attacks, one of them uh, basically slices off her uh, tail, part of her tail, but uh, gets burned with the, some of the acid, just not on her arm though. Burke's daughter uh, uses a uh, one of the mining suits and uh, takes on the uh, queen in a similar manner to uh, Ripley with the uh, power loader. But uh, Burke takes care of the queen. Uh, Blasting its head to, to pieces, and uh, fire got was started uh, in the uh, in the building, um, and the communication the communications officer is uh, the chief communica communications officer is. Is uh, the one who was burned, and she basically helps Burke concoct a cover story. But uh, they'll get into cryo sleep, and uh, the the basically Burke has a means of tracking, uh, put a tracker on Hiro Yutani's ship, and. Uh, 24 hours before they, they reach uh, our solar system, at least uh, Burke and his daughter's uh, cryo teams are going to uh, trigger uh, their, their wake up. They're going to get they're going uh, to get back uh, Burke's wife and hopefully bring down the company. And that is where the series ends. This was a fun series. I honestly I'd like to see it continue. Like I'd like I'd like to see, you know, Burke trying to take it take down the company, basically. And I kinda like the idea that Burke got to be a good guy. Moving on though to our last book for the moment moment. For our last book for the moment, we've got Star Wars number forty eight. So I've uh, I've made I made some I've made some bones about the fact that um, we're Star Wars is in the uh, currently the Star Wars comics are currently in the uh, generally um, the period of time between um, Return of the Jedi or Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. There's about a year between that, and they, there's been over four years of, of comics. So yeah. But it was announced that uh, in two months, both uh, Star Wars and Darth Vader will be coming to to their ends. Also, the uh, 
Lando, Lando Tarithian's trial uh, happened, and uh, Lando was eventually found not guilty. Extenuating circumstances, na by, namely, uh, extenuating circumstances being the fact that he helped rescue uh, Mon Mothma during the trial. So, um, the issue opens, Princess Leia is having uh, nightmares um, about Alderaan. Basically, being on Alderaan as a child when the Death Star came, but also re reliving uh, when Tartan ordered the destruction of, of uh, Alderaan. And, be and being forced to actually pull, make, do, do the action, actually push the buttons that, that uh, would cause a super laser to, uh, to go off. Um, 3PO, uh, here's her, uh, cry of alarm, and, uh, she says she'd like to, uh, speak with, with Luke. Um, and... Well, she got, she doesn't know if she can do this anymore. But she wants to rescue Han. She makes has kind of a plan to do so, and uh, well, the uh, but she she of course feels like she has to put the rebellion first, but. You know, it, it, it's Han, you know, she doesn't feel she can't, she, but she gets a, uh, a call from, uh, pilot Evan Levine, or Evan, uh, Verlaine, apparently, uh, Verlaine and Leia worked with, on a, uh, basically a fleet that, uh, a, no, a nomadic fleet that was, that was designed for Alderaan survivors. This is their check-in, the last three check-ins. And so, Verlaine, Leia, and Luke go to investigate. Um, they find the fleet, one of the ships, there's just one life sign aboard. Apparently it's a, uh, woman who's basically dead and is being kept alive in a Bogda tank. With Luke including in the trap. However, uh, Raiders attack um, and uh, Luke, ba Luke uh, you know, does what he protects, does what he can to protect the, uh, the ship but also uh, to get Leia off off in one of the, the escape pods. Um, and Leia's escape pod is caught by Zara, who has some history with uh, the princess. And that is where the issue ends. It's gonna be nice. This, this, it, I have to wonder where, what uh, the, about the future of uh, the Star Wars comics? And seeing as how they're uh, barreling towards Return of the Jedi, but we'll we'll find out. Anyways, that's gonna do it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, uh, Blue Sky, Instagram, Mastodon, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.